Sister Wynn, I don't know which one. You got a song? Yeah. She's got a song. All right.
that, you've got a praise report? I do. Went to my oncologist today, and they checked my labs, and my blood has come up to 8.9. Praise, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So, Amen. Hey, I'll break it in my chapter 1, give me a big healthy hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay. Drop down to verse 18. We read the other part of the chapter earlier in the month. So just drop down to verse 18. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When as his mother Mary was a spouse to Joseph, before they came together, she was found the child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which is spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, 
Behold, the virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took unto him his wife, and knew her not, till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. Now, I know that during this season, we focus on Jesus, and we should. He's the main character in all the universe. Amen. He's my provider, my protector, my healer, my best friend. Jesus is the one we should focus on. Mm -hmm. But then a lot of times we do talk about Mary. And this month we have talked about other characters in the what we call the Christmas story. But tonight I wanted to focus a little bit on Joseph. We know that Mary was chosen of God. You've read the Christmas story over and over and you know that when she was chosen of God. But when you stop and think about it, Mary was not the only one chosen of God. Joseph was chosen of God. You see, he was, uh, Mary had already been spoken for to be Joseph's wife. And God knew the type of heart that Joseph had. He knew that he had a heart like Abraham and that he would just believe what he'd tell him. Amen. I wonder if I wonder if God looks at us like he did Joseph thinking that he can tell us what is unbelievable and we'll still believe it huh is that a fair question Amen. Yep. not long ago I preached to you that it's not by sight it's by faith Abraham believed God that was counted to him for righteousness. So I want to talk about Joseph tonight. Now, this is an unusual situation. It had never happened before. It's never happened since. It will never happen again. That's right. For Jesus is the only begotten Son of God. <clears throat> so we see that Joseph actually had a great love for Mary. The scripture said he was a just man. Boy, those are hard to find these days. A person that is just and loving and kind and giving and God-fearing. How many men do you know like that? There ought to be more of them. Amen. How can you help to be more of them? Be one. Be one. You didn't know I was going to challenge you like that, did you? <laughs> but I ain't going to take it back. Just be one. Amen. But Joseph was a just man, and as he thought on these things, the woman he wanted for a wife is already with child. That was an abomination in Israel. He could have had her stoned to death. But while he was thinking on these things, he did not want to harm her because of his love for her. And yet, according to the rules of the law, and under the Jewish law, he did not want to take her to his wife. And so while he thought on these things, you see, Joseph, there was another Joseph in the Bible, actually, there's about four of them. But actually, there was another Joseph that was a lot like him. He was a thinker and a dreamer. Mm -hmm. And so while he's thinking upon these things, much like the Joseph of the Old Testament, which was Jacob's son, the firstborn of Rachel, while he's thinking on these things, the angel of the Lord spoke to him. He said, fear not, Joseph, to take Mary as your wife. For that which is conceived, that which is within her is conceived of the Holy Ghost. Now stop and think a minute. 
That is not something easy to believe. You think? That's not something easy to believe. True. This has never happened before. And Joseph has to choose. Whether to look upon the things of the world or to believe God. <coughs> but God had chosen him to use him to mentor Jesus as a child because that Joseph would believe God. Amen. Amen. Wow. Now think for just a minute. I want you to get outside the box. Somebody got Irene some Christmas presents and then one of those presents, there was two blockheads and I remembered the message that I preached on a blockhead in revival a few, I guess a couple years ago now. And uh, how that sometimes we just can't get out, can't think outside the box. But you see, Joseph was willing to listen and to believe God. Something that had never happened before. And the angel of the Lord said, she's conceived of the Holy Ghost. And she's going to bear a son. And you're going to name him Jesus because he's going to save his people from their sin. Wow. Wow. Well, that's a whole lot to dump on somebody all at one time, don't you think? Amen. But Joseph believed God. And so he took Mary unto him. Now, he was a just man. He believed God and he was unselfish. Men are usually anxious to consummate the marriage. But the scripture said, and he knew her not until she brought forth her firstborn son. He knew that this child was a holy child. That's right. And that he was not to defile Mary because she was going to be the mother of the holy son of God. He was a patient man. He was a just man. He was a holy man. He was a believing man. Amen. Is there any Josephs in the house? Amen. Huh? Is there any Josephs in the house? Yeah. You can turn this around. You can turn the gender around. And... Could you be like Mary and say, let it be unto me? As my Lord has said. Could you believe for that? <clears throat> in a sense it seems more to me like it'd be a little more complicated for Joseph to believe the story than for Mary to believe the story because yes. for her to believe the story it's between her and God right. but when you get involved in Joseph it's between Joseph and Mary and God mm. so he's got to believe in God and believe in Mary at the same time amen He's got to believe that the angel is telling him the truth about Mary. Not just speaking to him, but telling him the truth about Mary. He's got to believe God in a greater span that even Mary had to believe God. And I don't know why I felt compelled to do this tonight, but I felt compelled to talk about Joseph because in the Christmas story, most of the time we leave him, we just leave him standing in the corner in a nativity scene. Mm -hmm. But he wasn't just standing in the corner. He was chosen of God to care for Mary and the child Jesus. Amen. He would listen for the voice of God. Amen. Remember, this is just the first time the angel talks to him. You see, when Herod sets out a decree to kill all the children in Bethlehem under two years old, God speaks to Joseph again, and he takes Mary and the child into Egypt as the angel of the Lord tells him to. Right. He is continually walking with God, believing the voice of God, and doing what is right in the eyes of God. Mm -hmm. Is there any Josephs in the house? Mm -hmm. And so, 
after he's in Egypt till after Herod dies, then the angel of the Lord speaks to him again and said, now you can go back to Judea because those that sought the life of the child are dead. He is continually. Now that's where the scripture leaves us with Joseph. And that he went with Mary back to find him in the temple teaching. It doesn't tell us a whole lot more about the life of Joseph, but we know that he was a just man. And we know that he reared up Jesus and nurtured him as his own son and did for him what was right in the eyes of God because he was that believing man. Amen. There's details that we don't have, but we have enough to tell us that Joseph was a man who believed God and was used of God in nurturing Christ. Amen. Okay. Can I bring this to a spiritual nature now? God could trust Joseph to nurture Jesus and to care for Mary. Can God trust you to hold Jesus dear in your heart and to support the church? Huh? Yes. Hmm? See, those things are given to us for an example. Amen. Can God count on us to nurture his dear son in our hearts and to love the mother of the church? Can he count on us? Will we, will we be faithful like Joseph? Will we believe God for the things that the world said is impossible? Huh? Wasn't that a wonderful message Sunday night? Amen. Believe in God for your healing? I got to share this morning. They called with a wellness check. They do that for us, for us people that are in that age bracket. And she said, have you had any falls? No, not recently. Had anything going on this year that's different? And I said, yes. I said, I was diagnosed with trigeminal neuralgia and the pain got really severe, but I kept hearing something in my head that said it came gradually, it'll leave gradually. I've been off of pain meds for 11 weeks and it's just almost completely gone and she just started praising the Lord herself. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Isn't it good what God does for us? Amen. Isn't it good what he does for us? Yes. Can we be trusted to nurture faith in our heart? To trust God, to believe God for the unbelievable. Yes. A virgin bring forth a holy child? The world can't the world just can't understand that. That's right. The world can't grasp that. That's not grasped by some kind of scientific fact. It is grasped by faith because it's Amen. done by the mighty God that created all the universe. Amen. Hallelujah Amen. to the Lamb of God. Amen. You see, God didn't just choose Mary. He chose Joseph as well. That's right. Yeah. And you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a peculiar people that God has called out of darkness into his marvelous light. Can you be trusted to nurture Jesus in your heart above all things? Is there any Josephs in the house? How much like Joseph are you? Yeah. You know, the other Joseph was a dreamer, and he got in trouble for telling his dreams. And his brothers, that plus the fact that his father loved him so much. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes people get jealous of you when God loves you so much. Right. I don't know, there might be a few people jealous of me, I don't know, but I'll just accept the love of God anyway. He just loves me so much, I'll just let him keep on loving me. They can be jealous if they want to, I'll just let him keep on loving me. 
I don't think you got that. Do I have to repeat that again? They can be jealous if they want to. I'm just going to let him keep on loving me. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. And that's what happened. It put Joseph in great turmoil. And he had great trials, thrown in prison. Different things, false accused and thrown in prison and different things happened to him. But the scripture said, but God was with him. And so this Joseph was much like that. He dreamed and God spoke to him in a dream and he believed God. And God was just with him. Right. God was with him in Bethlehem. God was with him when he was in Egypt. God was with him when he came back to Nazareth. God was just with him. Amen. Because God had chosen him. Right. God's with you because God has chosen you to nurture Jesus above everything else. Amen. That was his priority. And he took it seriously. God said, go, he went. Just like Abraham. God said, go, he went. Amen. Are you listening? Are you believing? Yeah, I know there's more than one voice that speaks to you. How do I know? I hear voices too. Yeah, and I'm not loaning either. God speaks to me through his word. Amen. And we were listening to testimonies today on the Jesus Calling program. And one guy said that God had not spoke to him in an audible voice. But yet he'd heard the voice of God. And it doesn't matter how you hear the voice of God. But I one, one time did hear the voice of God in an audible voice. And I was thankful for the next time that I heard the voice of God that I didn't have to hear him in my ear. I could hear him in my heart. And that's where we really need to hear him is in our heart. Amen. Amen. But Joseph heard the angel say, fear not. It's all right, Joseph. That's right. Mary is bearing the holy child. Just take care of him. Just take care of him. What a responsibility. But what favor is there with God to entrust you with so much? Mm -hmm. We are entrusted in nurturing Christ ourselves. Did you not know you're entrusted with that? You are entrusted to nurture Christ just like Joseph was. Mm -hmm. He has chosen you. Amen. To bear the name of Jesus. He has entrusted you to nurture Christ in your life. How many Josephs do we have in the house? I'm not going to ask you for a show of hands, but are you a Joseph? And if you feel like you're not measured up, that's not the worst thing in the world. If you can say, I want to be. Amen. I want to be. I want to believe God for the unbelievable. Yes, amen. I want, able, I want God to be able to speak to me and me just act upon it. Amen. I want to know the voice of God. Yes. And be able to trust God when it sounds like it is totally out of this world. That means something. God didn't just choose Mary, but he chose Joseph. You have what I feel like the Lord wants me to share with you tonight. 